Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to a, uh, another meaningful lesson to learn. Sense. Actually, it's a common sense. As I said all my years, common sense, Bible truth, and <coughs> reality. Common sense, Bible truth, reality. The Bible said, yes, mark this. That means uh, pay attention, mark this, okay? The last days are here upon us, all this year, for a long time. And the year, for me, is almost, hey, baby, almost 84, <laughs> coming to it, really 84. The last days, okay, with an S, that means a long period of time. In the Revelation, it's a thousand, it says a thousand years. Uh, in, without this S, there's the day, the end of the world. So last day and last days is different. Remember that, okay? But the last days are here upon us. I copy this from a different kind of uh, English translation. Grievous, perilous, terrible, dangerous. I found these four different words. But in Chinese, it's a little bit different. It's a dangerous place. It's a terrible time, okay? Dangerous time, terrible time. And grievous, that means uh, very hard to bear. Uh, this is all bad. This is all bad. <laughs> when we buy a uh, bucket, of <laughs> bucket of apple, it's all run up apple. And you won't like it. It's smelly too. All bad. Okay. <laughs> I suddenly remember a uh, one time, yeah. <laughs> I suddenly remember a uh, one time. Uh, Eric, you, you still remember Eric? He found out <laughs> some, some of the thing, I forgot what it is, and he put it on the computer <laughs> outside of the park. He said, Oh, man. You're all in a bed. Okay? <laughs> Terrible time. This is not about sickness, physical, material thing. Not about that. No physical. No physical material thing can be this bad, dangerous, perilous, okay, terrible. No physical material thing can be this bad. Even maybe thousands of people, millions of people are dying in Ukraine war. It's not like that. It's still not using these words to describe human physical suffering is not that. It's about destruction of the soul, about suffering of the soul, about disobedience to what says in the Bible. That is grievous, perilous, perilous, terrible and dangerous. Okay? We are in a time like this. This is talking about not temporary, not a short period of time, 120, 1,000 years. It's nothing. Nothing about that. It's about eternal damnation, eternal suffering. And suddenly, all people, so many of them, are found they're going to hell. Men corrupted in mind, reprobate as to the faith. Everything can be normal except when you come to Bible 2 and believe Jesus, how to worship God. All have seen the full short of the glory of God. Okay? I used to use this illustration. I used to think when I was young, Maybe lying, everybody lied once upon a time or many times. Nobody never tell one lie. 
I used to think that to illustrate all have seen. <clears throat> so I came up from the uh, storybook. There is a lie competition. Everybody said a lot of lies. But the one, the number one lie is what? It is. The man went up and declared, I never lie in my lifetime. And he is number one. When someone say, I never lie in my lifetime, that's number one. Liar. But today, I'm about to be really evil. I suddenly it suddenly dawned to me. Disobedient to parents. Everybody, nobody can say no. Disobedient to parents. Every one of us did it one time or the other. Especially this guy, myself. Of course, you can say my father was lucky. He died when I was six. He's lucky. He does not have to uh, suffer all the rebellious things that I do. But I think I sympathize with my mother. He had, she had no way to uh, tell me what to do. You see, I went to sleep on the tombstone. Any parent like that? No. I sleep on the runway, airport runway. You say take off. I sleep right there. I could sleep there. You see? Disobedient to parents. I did a lot, a great deal of them. Everybody did some other thing. Nobody all time obedient to parents. Even these young guys. We all fall short of that. Nobody disagree. And here says, I believe Jesus, but not abide the word of Jesus. Even 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I said? This is a popular common problem in all over the world. Especially, I have said it for a few times. In Ukraine, the white people are killing white people. They are all both orthodox, orthodox Christians. They are leader, important people in the world, in the world, taking picture, associate with their priest. Okay, they are high official religious official. They are all great orthodox, but they are killing each other right now. If they really think they believe Jesus, it's a great disgrace to their to their Jesus. Okay? <clears throat> Say that believe Jesus, but not do what he said. It's a great insult to anybody all over the world you find lots of these kind of people fall short of the glory of God seeing the even saying that they believe Jesus some may say then I better say I never believe Jesus that's one sin also some may argue I don't know about Jesus that's another sin also okay then some people say I choose to believe there is no God that's a very big serious sin also. To those who had believed the Jews, Jesus said what? You belong to the devil. Very straightforward. To the head that believed the Jews, they belong to the devil. Lots of them all over the world, all this year, especially true today. Now, number three. Jesus believer form one body with Christ as his head. All the believers all over the world come together, become 
one body of Christ. There's one church of Christ. Here in the scripture, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23, Romans chapter 12, 4 to 5. A lot of people know this. Okay? All the believers are together in one church, one body of Christ. Now, here we have seven ones. There's one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. I count seven one. Okay? Today, we will touch about uh, all of them, actually. Okay? You can say all these are uh, connected. In the Bible, you have to lay it out very clear, very simple. There are only one body, one church, okay? One spirit, one hope, one law, one faith, one baptism, one God. <clears throat> one body is the church of Christ. It was formed 2,000 years ago. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Okay? All the believers, if they read the Bible and study history, they all know. The Church of Christ started Acts chapter 2, verse 1. All these 2,000 years, Jesus said, I will build my church. And he did. The church already there is Acts chapter 2, verse 1. How the church grew up to become what? Become a church. Church of Christ. When the one gospel was preached, Church of Christ form or produced. Okay? If you read the book of Acts, yeah, you can finish the book of Acts, yes? Already finished? Okay? Uh, in the book of Acts, chapter 13 and chapter 14, you will know that the word of God was preached to all over there, the, the place they went. And then the Church of Christ, Church of Christ, Church of Christ, in each city, and Apostle Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for each church, those church of Christ. When the gospel of Christ is preached, you have church of Christ produced. Uh, you have Acts chapter 13 to Acts chapter 14. That's enough. You will know they, all, they, they have churches because they went out to preach the gospel of Christ. The word of God. So for the first 500 some years, there was one church of Christ. Romans chapter 16, verse 16. Especially in Rome, Italy, they all know that if they all call church of Christ. Okay? This is history and Bible we can find. Therefore, churches with any other name is a result of rebellious children. Nobody can argue this one. Okay? I preached this quite a few times before. Church of Christ has formed, established all their believers in the Church of Christ, taught their children, brought their children, bring their children to the same Church of Christ. Now, if all this year, forever, into forever, all children obedient to their parents, all believers still in Church of Christ. This is a simple logic everybody can understand. You don't need philosophy. You don't need much education. Father bring his children to this church of Christ. Father bring his children to this church of Christ. All generations obey their parents. The whole world still have one church of Christ. So as you understand that, right? Like your father bring you here to church of Christ. Someday, if you have your family, you bring your family to the church of Christ. And their children bring their family to the church of Christ. All the generation, forever, we have one church of Christ. Who will come to the other church? 
somewhere, sometime, some children disobey. Father and brother, you go to the church of Christ, I'm going to build another one. I will start another one. And that was logically happened 1,500 years ago in Rome, Italy. Some people came out from the Church of Christ and they became Roman Catholic Church. Okay? This is logic. I don't have to be there. 1,500 years old. It's common sense. Okay? It's common sense. All churches that is not called Church of Christ are rebellious, rebel to, to their children, uh, their parents, okay? Rebellious to their children, uh, to their parents. Genesis chapter 4, we have Adam taught his children to worship God. The first time we call it in the Bible, Adam taught his children to worship God. The God created them. The God created him. And their children continue to worship God, continue to obey their parents. We still worshiping one God. There's no religion. Nobody started religion. You can say the Jewish religion was replaced by the Church of Christ. That's why they nailed Jesus to the cross. The Church of Christ. Okay? Adam taught that his children to worship God. Parents teach children to worship God, teach children to worship God. They will still be worshiping the same God, the same way. There's no other religion. This is very simple, easy to understand logic. Every generation of children obey their father all human still worship the same one God. This is easy logic. All rebel, uh, believers children obey their parents. We still be one church of Christ. There's no any other church. Any other church is the result of rebellious. Church with other name is a result of disobeying their parents. This alone is a sin deserved to be in hell. Okay? But the grace of God in the Bible is sin. Okay? Now, here is another interesting one. Husband and wife. This time I use Mark chapter 10, 6 to 9. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Marriage between a male and a female. Man and wife, man and woman. Okay? According to Romans chapter 1, man and man cannot be married. If they do, Apostle Paul condemned them. Okay? Not me. I don't know how and I don't know why. But the Bible said, Apostle Paul tells them they will be condemned. <clears throat> that's all I can say. Of course, that's what that means. Means go to hell, okay? For this reason, amen. The Chinese doesn't, the Chinese should, here should have a nan, nan, yan, okay? But in English, it's clear. It's man. Uh, Chinese translation only human, okay? Human can be lady, can be woman, also, if you want to argue. But here, in English, nobody can argue, because they use the man. A man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two become one flesh. Never said in the Bible. Now, so they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let men not separate. There is no divorce. That's in the Bible. Men do not separate once they are married. This above, 
are commonly quoted in a marriage ceremony. Okay, especially when I precise the ceremony, we always read this scripture. All who do not desire a divorce, why do you quote the scripture? This scripture. Okay, I disagree. I disagree. If someone asks you for a divorce, I disagree because the Bible said. But the one who asks for a divorce, they don't say what the Bible said. Okay, they don't use it. That's the problem. Okay, when you come to worship God in one church together, how about they all church of Christ? The for husband and wife, the old couple, worship in one church of Christ. Their children may still live in the same house, okay? So don't argue that they live. One live in Flushing, one live in uh, Great Lake, one live in Colbert. Don't argue with that. I'm talking about living in the same house. Sunday, father and mother go to one church. Daughter, go to another church. Son, go to another church. I know some people have five, six, seven, eight people go to four different churches. Now, how about different church of Christ? Okay, but live in the same house. On Sunday, they go to different church of Christ. Now, all who refuse to be in the church of Christ are sinners. How about those who go to the different church of Christ? Think about that. But here today we're talking about husband and wife are one. The two become one. Of course, by the grace of God, here we are blessed. Well, right now, right now we only have one perfect couple here. Husband and wife. Oh, my wife and, I and myself here. <laughs> okay, so don't miss that one. Okay? So it's one, two, or one, two, okay? My wife and I, we're both here. Moses and Ozzy are both here. Husband and wife, because we're one. The two become one. We in one church together also. Okay? Perfect. But you look around, especially in my 16 years of preaching, lots of women, their husband, they said not to come together. When you come to worship God, no, I won't go with you. How about let's go eat laughter together. Red laughter. Hey, David, you know who is red laughter? I, I still enjoy that. <laughs> the wife and husband, they go together. Why don't I say, no, you go, I don't. I will eat porridge at home. This is unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is a sin and go to hell. Because unrighteous. How about let's go to Ireland together? I don't know why. I don't I don't like to go to Ireland. Of course, you've been there, right? Eh? Because I hope Ireland is poor place. You know? Beautiful scenery. Okay. You go, I don't go. Okay? Husband said, I will travel to a sightseeing in Ireland. You go, I don't. They don't say that. But when you come to church, you go, I stay home. It happened, right? Right here. Everywhere. Husband to wife, wife to husband. Are they not two become one? Or only these two become one? These two? No, not. But all marriage quote that. Now here's interesting one. I make up this 
in a Chinese this this I made up this Chinese phrase. Okay? There's no way you can find in the dictionary from anywhere. It's these occasions. What occasions? Thanksgiving time, Christmas time, birthday time, anniversary time, lot of celebration time. They all come together. Especially if it is husband and wife. They have to be together. Otherwise, how do you celebrate anniversary, huh? <laughs> the husband celebrate anniversary with his wife without his wife? David, do you do that? <laughs> Anybody do that? The two are one. They start, they are joining two to two together, become one. In Christmas time, you see, even our little grace, you fry, fry all the time, come here, we're together. Maybe, okay? Birthday suffering, uh, celebrating, we're all together. Eat in the same table. Maybe different food. <laughs> But still in the same table, very harmonious, chatting with each other. We take care of each other, we help each other, we live harmony. Everybody good to each other, perfect. We also have this saying, I don't know what the, the English as can translate it this close by neighbor. Better than far away, peaceful. Sophia, Sophia, you, you know this in Chinese word? You know this word? I know Gordon knows this word, Chinese word. Okay. This Sophia, do you know this Chinese word? <laughs> you don't know this Chinese word. Okay. <clears throat> that means your next door neighbor in a time of Danger, a time of perilous, is much better than your far away relative, especially if they're in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in China. When they get to set up everything and fly here, you will be dead for a long time. <laughs> That's what that means. So you want to have good relationship with your next door uh, neighbor. That's what that means. Precious, appreciate your next door neighbor when you have big problem, disaster time. They may have you right there. That's what that means. <clears throat> but for relatives, for king folks, brothers, sisters in a physical time, except they come to worship God on Sunday, everything changes. Saturday, become reprobate to each other. Okay? Each that said go to different kinds of churches. Saturday we come to worship God. As I say quite a few times now, what the church is the most blessed right now. Because the three children are all here. Okay? With the parents all together. All parents in the world enjoy this and we as children would enjoy and appreciate a lot much better if our parents are here with us we worship God in the same church the same way and we love each other not just in other times especially when it comes to serve the Lord we are family but danger, terrible time. When come to worship God, come to follow Jesus, believe in Jesus, they suddenly become wicked, become reprobate. That's said again. Even ride the same car here with you, they will go somewhere else. They have to do that. Have to let you know. You are not my son. Have to let you know. I'm not your father. I'm not your mother. I will not 
I will never be in the same church with you when you come to believe Jesus. This description is so vivid, so true, so common everywhere on this earth right now. Remember, as I said, I found all these words, English words, from different translations. And you call this a dangerous time, perilous time, grievous time, terrible time. Not just physical death. No physical disaster deserves to be described with these five words together. Only eternal damnation deserves to come up with these five different words to describe. Those who are not in the church of Christ, they will go to hell to suffer forever. But how can we help? We take them all the way here. They just make their point to see. I will not go into a church with you, to church people and worship God with you. Never. But when it comes to eating time, when it comes to traveling time, when it comes to do anything else. You are my son, I'm proud of you. You are my daughter, I'm proud of you. You are my father, you are my mother, you are my whatever. But when you come to worship God, I call the Bible. Suffering, they are reprobate. It's sad. As I told you two weeks ago, okay, I told some people. Your father, your mother, when you come to worship God in the same church of Christ, they are reprobate. When you come to celebrate everything else, it's normal and fine. It happened in our lifetime. It, almost all of us, all of us, our neighbor, this is terrible time. This is horrible. This is grievous. This is perilous and dangerous. This is time right upon us. We have to pray to God the only way we can. I have seen a lot. <clears throat> all things, right, watch this, all things can be normal. Except when counts in worship to God, suddenly they all become reprobate. Refuse to reason. How about this verse? I don't care. How about this verse? I don't care. How about this verse? I don't care. How about our relationship? They start. It literally happened. I expect if they say that, okay, that's it. I'll tell you, this junction really do what they promise. I will respect their promise. And by the grace of God, and my father died. If my father will be will hear. That's what I do. When it comes to what the Bible says, I'm, I take it seriously. How about our relationship? Say that. I don't care. When it comes to this verse, I don't care. How about this verse? I don't care. How about this verse? I don't care. When it comes to the Bible, nothing care. Okay? Suddenly, they all become reprobate. As I told you, this is sad. And the scripture described it 2,000 years, always like this. See, committed each Sunday, anyone who worship God not in the church of Christ, they committed sin and insult to Christ. 
Okay? Anybody do not worship God on Sunday in the Church of Christ. They all go to hell. You know, <coughs> today when I come in, it was pretty hot. You know why I still put this on? I mean, you want to know? Let me tell you. Recently, I suddenly found my <coughs> my video is listed by all these famous preachers. When I went on to listen to my own radio preaching, they have a whole list of those great preachers. The difference is, some have 3 million views. You know how many I have? Peter. <laughs> 3 million views. One video, when I click on to, to, to view, I have 3, 5, 7, 10, 20. The best I got is 2,000. But they have millions of views. But they listen together. And I found without this on, it does not look good. <laughs> it looks good like that. They put a tie on it there. Yeah, so when a video, when you video tell it, I, I, from now on, I have to put this on, Gordon. It looks better. Uh, like uh, Of course, like uh, the, the new way is, is okay, but uh, not, <laughs> not on YouTube. That's why I put it on. Someday, worship God, I put it what's said in the Bible. If you believe Jesus, then what you have to do, you have no choice. Otherwise, don't do that. Don't say, I believe Jesus. It's an insult to Christ. Jesus do not like it. Luke chapter 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I said? Jesus hates it. He does not like it. So don't do it. Conclusion now. How about this Bible too? Jesus prayed prayed for unity. Jesus prayed for unity. Why don't you care? Why can you not care? How about your prayer? Do you pray? P-R-A-Y And you expect and you pray that God will listen or answer your prayer. How about Jesus' prayer? You don't care? Jesus prayed. All his believers perfectly united in one church, one body of Christ. He prayed in black ink, white paper. Why don't they care? And they say, I praise God, answer my prayer. God answer your prayer. And at the same time, you do not care what Jesus prayed. What is this? Reprobate. Unrighteous. Unrighteousness. Jesus prayed. He prayed, recorded. And Titus read it this morning. Loud and clear. Jesus said, I pray. Not just for these people, also for those who because of their work believe me, follow me. They all be perfectly united. As you in me, I am in you, we are one. All the world, all believers in one church, one body. Jesus pray for it. Why can anybody not care? Now, listen to me. Correctly. If they don't care what Jesus said, why should God care about what they said, what they pray? Why? Don't expect God to answer your prayer. If God answer your prayer and you don't care about what Jesus prayer, is it fair? There's a sin right there all over the world. That's why I keep pounding on. Anyone do not worship in the church of Christ will go to hell. And by the grace of God, 
I said it. Nobody come to shout against it. Have a parade outside. Protest. You know why? I know. Because I don't have million viewers. Hey Peter, you may watch out, you have a 20 some view. <laughs> Baby, you have 20 some view, you know that? You are preaching on the retreat. You did not watch your own view. You're, you should do that. Hey, add one more. Learn <laughs> from me. Uh, Peter, you said, well, okay. If I had 7, 10 million viewers, if I say that, I'd be in big trouble. But now, I have four, five. <laughs> That's why I can preach the truth. I'm blessed by the grace of God. But, listen to me, sooner or later, what I preach will be exposed. You watch it. Okay? Because they listen together with all those million views. Okay? Somehow I just found it. I click and I found, hey, look at this. Joe Austin in there too, you know that? He has 7 million people a week. <clears throat> Let there be no denomination churches. No denomination. The Bible said that. No denomination. How dare you say that I'm Methodist. I am Presbyterian. I am Baptist. I am Roman Catholic. Let me tell you, they all go to H E L L. See, I can say it. nobody protests outside. You know what? I have less than 10 views. <laughs> if I have a million views, if I have a Moses. <laughs> this is why I can preach the truth. God made it that way. And you are here with me. You'll be in danger too, you know that? One day, if I have 10 million view and I say things like that, hey, be careful. <laughs> they might destroy the whole thing in putting you in there. But by the grace of God, I will preach what's said in the Bible. And reality. How about this? One denomination man, they will go to hell. You see? I say so many times, nobody can beat me <laughs> because they don't watch my video. Sooner or later, they'll discover, hey, how come this guy, only three of you, how come he's in here? Let's watch, see what he said. Oh, something. Two thousand years ago, Apostle Paul described our situation. Perfect. This is the word of God. Believe that. Two thousand years ago, Abba also described our situation. Reality, Bible two, common sense. But by the grace of God, we are all blessed. Okay, and we are safe. And may the Lord bless each one of you. So take good care of yourself. And be blessed. You all are here together to worship God according to what's said in the Bible. May the Lord bless each one of you. Uh, David, come to